Hey, and welcome back to Wild Mythology. I welcome you to the channel with bread and salt. For today's video, we're going to cover some gods of magic from mythology. But before we get to that, don't forget to join this month's mythology giveaway for Neil Gaiman's book called Norse Mythology, an awesome 300 page book filled with the most famous myths, gods, and creatures from Norse mythology. All you have to do to join our giveaway is subscribe and leave a comment on this video. Plus, somewhere in this video is our mythology scavenger question. Answer the question correctly in the comments and you'll get an extra ballot for a chance to win the giveaway. So keep an eye out for that. Now, I think it's time to get to the gods of magic. Number 1. Hecate being one of the most famous deities of all magic and witchcraft, Hecate was the goddess of crossroads, boundaries, ghosts, the moon, necromancy, witchcraft, and magic in Greek mythology. She was usually depicted as a beautiful goddess holding a pair of torches, a key, or some snakes. She was also known as the triple form goddess and was depicted as such with either two faces growing out of each side of her head or even full bodies connected to her sides. She was also usually accompanied by dogs, which was one of her sacred animals. In mythology, Hecate was the only child of Persis, the titan of destruction, and Asteria, the titaness of shooting stars. During the war against the titans, Hecate fought on the side of the gods and was helpful in their victory. She also battled in the war against the giants and defeated the giant Cletus by lighting him on fire. Many years after the wars, Hecate was in her cave when she suddenly heard a loud scream. Curious, Hecate went to investigate, but in the end, found nothing. Nine days later, a saddened Demeter came close to Hecate's cave and yelled out for her daughter Persephone. Realizing that she heard Persephone's scream, Hecate told Demeter what she heard. The two then traveled together to the palace of the sun titan Helios. There, they asked the all-seeing Sun Titan what had happened to Persephone, and he told them that Hades had kidnapped her to the Underworld. Eventually, when Persephone returned from the Underworld, upon seeing her, Hecate hugged the young goddess. In return for helping her mother, Persephone invited Hecate to live in the Underworld as her minister and companion. After helping Persephone, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades offered her a sliver of their power so that she could be the watcher to the boundaries of their realms, allowing Hecate to know when anyone journeyed into the underworld, the sea, or the high skies. Later on in myth, she would take Hecuba, the Queen of Troy, as a servant in the form of a black dog after the queen tried to kill herself during the fall of Troy. She would also teach magic and potion making to the enchantress Circe and the witch Medea. Number 2. Isis In Egyptian mythology, many of the gods shared the domain of magic, but one of the most important was Isis, the goddess of motherhood, rebirth, healing, wisdom, women, and magic. In mythology, Isis was a member of the Enneads and the child of the Sky Mother Nut and the Earth Father Geb, alongside her siblings Osiris, Set, Epthys, and Horus the Elder. After the Sky Mother and Earth Father were separated from each other, Geb passed on his crown to his eldest son Osiris, making him the new king of Egypt. Osiris then took Isis as his wife, making her his new queen. Many years later, Osiris' younger brother Set, the god of chaos, rebelled against him, resulting in Set killing Osiris and spreading his cut-up pieces around Egypt. Fearing that she would be next, Isis fled and began to search for Osiris' body parts. With the help of Thoth, the god of wisdom and magic, and Anubis, the god of death, Isis found all of her husband's pieces and reassembled them. She then resurrected Osiris, making him the first mummy, and together the two conceived a child. Unfortunately, Osiris was unable to stay in the world of the living, and so had to make his new home in the Duat, the Egyptian underworld. Still hiding from Set, Isis gave birth to Horus the Younger, who was the reincarnation of Horus the Elder. During his childhood, Horus was attacked by the agents of Set, and was poisoned multiple times. Luckily, Isis was a master of healing magic and was able to heal her son. When Horus reached adulthood, he challenged Set for the throne and for the revenge of his father. In one of Horus's clashes with Set, Isis tried to help her son by throwing a harpoon at Set. Unfortunately, Set dodged and the harpoon struck Horus, which allowed Set to flee. 
furious with his mother, Horus cut off her head. Luckily, Thalf was able to save Isis by replacing her head with the head of a cow. In the end, Horus was able to defeat Set and banish him to the sands of Egypt. Unfortunately, the sun god Ra was upset because Set was one of his favorite gods, and so wouldn't accept Horus as the new king. So with her powerful magic, Isis created a venomous snake that bit Ra, making him feel extremely ill. Getting worse and worse by the day, Isis offered to heal Ra if he told her his true name. You see, those who knew the true name of a god or goddess had complete power over them. Having no choice, Ra told Isis his true name, allowing Isis to make Ra accept Horus as the new king of Egypt. Number 3. The Degda In Irish mythology, one of the most powerful gods was the Degda, the god of agriculture, fertility, strength, wisdom, druidry, and magic. In mythology, Degda was the king of the Tua de Danann, the tribe of gods that inhabited Ireland. He was the husband of the Morrigan, the ferocious goddess of war who could get very jealous of other goddesses trying to steal her husband. In many tales, it is said that Dogda owned three powerful magical artifacts. The first was a staff or club that had conflicting powers. One end of the staff or club could kill anything it touched, while the other end brought life to anything it touched. The second magical item was a bottomless cauldron that never ran out of any liquid or food put within it. And the final item was a harp that can manipulate the seasons and the emotions of men. Using these items, Dagda was able to win many battles. As well as owning many magical artifacts, Dagda had his own magical power. In one myth, Dagda had an affair with the river goddess Bone, who was married to Dagda's main steward, Ekmar. One day, Dagda sent Ekmar out for an errand, allowing Dagda to impregnate Bone. Not wanting any harm to come to his child, Dagda put a spell on Ekmar that made him feel no hunger, tiredness, or thirst, as well as making him perceive the sun as standing still. After nine months, Bone gave birth to her son and gave him to Dagda to take away. All the while, Ekmar only thought a single day had passed. Hey, it's time for our mythology scavenger question. Here's the question. In Norse mythology, what is the name of Odin's eight-legged horse? Make sure to comment your answer so you can get an extra ballot to win this month's giveaway. Now, back to the gods of magic. Number 4. Circe or Circe Another magic goddess from Greek mythology is Circe, the Enchantress, who is famously known to enjoy turning men into beasts. She is said to be the child of the sun titan Helios, and either the Oceanid Perse or the magic goddess Hecate. Circe is also the aunt of Medea, the mortal witch who helped Jason steal the Golden Fleece. In mythology, the minor sea god named Glaucus was in love with the beautiful nymph Skyla. But no matter how hard he tried to have her accept his love, Skyla turned him down every time. Not wanting to give up, Glaucus went to Circe and asked her to make him a love potion. But upon seeing Glaucus, Circe fell in love with him and offered herself to be his bride. Not in love with Circe, Glaucus turned her down. Enraged, Circe went to the waterhole where Skyla bathed, and she poisoned the water using plants and herbs. When Skyla got into the water, she began to scream out in pain as her body transformed. Six dog heads grew out of her waist, five extra long necks with heads attached to them grew out of her neck, and her legs changed into twelve tentacles. No longer a beautiful maiden, Skyla was now the monster that guarded the Strait of Messalina alongside the monster Charybdis. Another myth Circe was involved in took place during the gods' war with the giants. One of the giants fled from the war and happened upon Circe's island. Seeing an easy target, the giant was about to attack Circe when her father Helios appeared. Helios killed the giant and splattered his blood onto the earth and from the giant's blood grew the herb moly, an important plant that would be used against Circe in the future. Circe's most famous appearance in mythology is in the Odyssey, when Odysseus and his men land on Circe's island Eia. Upon reaching the island, Odysseus sends a group of men to scout out the island. When the men find Circe's home, the enchantress invites them to dine with her. 
The men agree, but as they go to sit down at the table, Odysseus' second-in-command, Eurylochus, notices tame lions and wolves, as well as a large group of pigs surrounding Circe's home. Suspicious, Eurylochus hides and observes his men, who after eating Circe's food, turned into pigs. You see, Circe added one of her tricky potions to the food. Alarm, Eurylochus runs back to Odysseus and tells him what happened. Wanting to free his men, Odysseus goes to face off against Circe, but is suddenly stopped by Hermes. Hermes gives Odysseus some of the moly herb and tells him that those who ingest the herb are unaffected by Circe's magic. Using the herb, Odysseus is able to trick Circe and free his men. Odysseus then stays on the island for a year and even fathers some children with Circe. Eventually, when it's time for Odysseus to leave, Circe gives him some advice on how to get back home. And there it is, I give you the gods of magic. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like us to cover something from mythology, folklore, or legend, make sure to leave a comment and we'll add it to our video list. Well, that's all for now. Until next time on Wild Mythology.